Welcome back everyone. We are doing our second example for arc length using integrals and applications of calculus. We've got our formula here from our intro video that we found. Uh, I've got my little piece of a curve here. This piece is part of y equals one half quantity e to the x plus e to the negative x. Uh, my interval here is zero to ln three. So if you think about dropping down to the axis here, we're going from zero to ln three, which is a little bigger than one. And we are finding the length. So what we'll first need to do is square our derivatives. So our f of x is a one half e to the x plus e to the minus x. Our f prime then that we're going to use is going to be one half times, now the derivative of e to the x is itself, and the derivative of e to something is itself, so if I say plus e to the negative x, but the chain rule actually gives us a negative one multiple here. So we will actually get that our f prime of x is one half e to the x minus e to the negative x here. And that's our f prime. Now we will need to square that. So we will take f prime of x and we're going to have to square it and we have multiple terms. So we'll need to do some distributing. So first thing I know, if I square one half, a half times a half will give us a fourth, right? And if you're having trouble seeing how to square this, then I would recommend writing out two copies so that you can see the distributing. But if you know the shortcut formula for doing this, then great, I'm gonna assume that you don't and go through this just to be sure. So here we have one fourth. If I take e to the x times e to the x, I add those exponents, so x plus x gives me two x, e to the two x. Now if I do the outside terms, I would get e to the x times negative e to the minus x. So first thing, positive times negative is negative x plus negative x would be zero. So this is really e to the zero. And then a similar thing happens here, right? I get e to the x and negative e to the negative x. So I get another minus e to the zero term. When I do my last two terms, negative and negative would become positive. And then negative x plus negative x, I would get e to the negative two x. When I distribute that. Now something to notice here is that e to the zero is going to be one, right? So both of these terms here are minus one. So when we get our f prime squared, we actually get one fourth e to the two x minus two plus e to the negative two x. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and write this out so that everything is distributed over four, okay? And I'm just going to do this because of what's coming up. Um, so we'll have e to the two x minus two plus e to the negative two x, and we're gonna have all of that over four. So that's my f prime squared. So let me go ahead and go back to this. So now when I integrate and I do a to b, and I have the square root of one plus f prime squared. So something is going to happen quite remarkably. Uh, so we'll have integral from zero to ln three. And I will have one plus whatever I have here. Now what I have here is over four. So instead of writing one, so you can see it, I'm gonna write it as four over four instead of one. And then I'll just copy this down here. Um, and what you might start to see when we go to add this four over four is something super convenient. In, in one of my other videos, I have called this, first of all, drawing a fraction bar straight. Second of all, I have called this very convenient factoring. Now this looks like a mess to integrate so far, right? So we wouldn't integrate this the way we would. So what we do is we're gonna add this four over four. Now everything's over four, so what we can do is just simply add the four to here. Now I want you to notice it is only going to change the middle term. This middle term was a negative two. When I add four, it changes signs. It becomes a positive two. So what we get is integral from zero to ln of three, of course, 
we get e to the 2x plus 2 plus e to the negative 2x over 4. Now what is different about this is very minimal to what was originally different, right? The difference here is that I have a plus 2 over 4 middle term versus a minus 2 over 4 middle term. Now notice that this is what it was before and this came from 1 fourth and this was basically e to the x minus e to the negative x squared is what this was, right? So here's the interesting thing. When I change this to plus, this expression actually is 1 fourth e to the x plus e to the negative x squared. So the plus 1 has changed the sign of your middle term, left the other terms the same, and when you do that with a perfect square, it basically changes it from a square where you have a difference to a square where you have a sum. So we don't expect that you have seen how to factor this in normal algebra. This is not something that you would go, oh yes, of course, I see how to factor that, right? Not everybody's going to be able to do that. And if you can, that's great. But most people can't. And so this convenient adding 1 and changing the sign of the middle term now means that what you're integrating, and in order to see this nicely, because this is gross to integrate under a square root, right? You're supposed to be seeing that this is really 1 fourth e to the x plus e to the negative x quantity squared, okay? Not because this is similar to what we had in the beginning, right? Not because it was what was in the beginning, but because when we took the derivative and then we squared it, we got this, and now adding the 1 gave us this opposite middle term, and so it factors with the same terms but the opposite sign. That's the actual reason there. So now we have things inside that are nice, perfect squares, and we can go about our business um, a little bit odd, that convenient factoring, right? So what we'll do to make this uh, nice and easy to see, I'll go ahead and pull out uh, the square root of 1 fourth, so that's 1 half. And then if I have the square root of this square, then we will just be integrating e to the x plus e to the negative x, right? So everything in here is a perfect square. The square root is going to just change those into what they are, and then we'll have that. So now we'll integrate, and this is easy. You can even bump out your 1 half if you like. You don't have to. Uh, so if we take the antiderivative of e to the x, that will just be e to the x. If we take the antiderivative of e to the minus x, uh, just like when we had the chain rule, uh, we would multiply by negative 1. Here we would divide by negative 1, which still changes the sign, so we get minus e to the negative x. And then our bounds are x bounds, so we just use from 0 to ln of 3. And we'll go ahead and evaluate that. So our length is going to be 1 half, and we have e to the ln 3 minus e to the negative ln 3. Some of you might want to simplify that as you write it down. I'm going to leave it so I don't lose anybody. And then plugging in 0, I get e to the 0 minus e to the negative 0 is still 0 for the exponent. All right, and our 1 half is out front. So now just be careful with a couple of the terms. First of all, we know that e to the 0, that's going to be 1, right? So we get 1 there, and we get 1 there, and that's no problem. And 1 minus 1 is just going to give us 0 for all of this. Uh, what I might encourage you to do is use property of logs here. This is like having a negative 1 in front of the ln of 3. What we can do if we have a coefficient in front of a log, remember that's the same as having a power inside of the log. So before I do this last little thing, I'm going to go ahead and change that term. I'm going to make e to the ln 3 minus, and then if I bump this up, I'll do it in two steps. That'll be e to the ln of 3 to the minus 1. So using property of logs, we have bumped our coefficient of negative 1 up to be a power of what's inside of the log. Okay, so if we do that, now we will have, draw it down a little bit further, so we'll have 1 half e to the ln of 3 minus 
e to the ln. And what's 3 to the negative 1 power? Well, that's the reciprocal of 3, which is 1 third. And now hopefully we can see that e to the ln of something is just that something, right? These are inverses, so we get 1 half e to the ln 3 is just going to be 3, minus e to the ln of 1 third is just going to be 1 third. Uh, if we go ahead and we'll skip the common denominator work here, so this is 9 over 3 minus 1 over 3, that would be 8 thirds and then one half of that would be four-thirds units, which is our answer for the length here. Okay, we have a similar very convenient factoring video in our example three video, the next video. Uh, check that out if you want to see another one where there's a little bit of weird distributing and then we use the add wand to change the sign and things miraculously factor out a different way. These are not my creation. This is something that you just experience when you go through the calculus machine and see the, these problems and do these by hand. So uh, good luck and check us out in the example three video.